Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, we're going to take a look at the last of the important settings inside the Settings tab of our project. And we can wrap all this up, and we'll have a good basic understanding of what we're going to need to know to support learning actual editing. Now, editing is going to be coming up in the next tutorial, but I want to just wrap all this up, like I said, so you have the best foundation you can possibly have moving forward. So that way, when you get in and you start editing, you're like, oh, I, want, I wonder how I, I do that. You'll be able to remember back to your settings, and you're going to know where to go into your settings to be able to alter things to keep your sequence going and to keep your edit going as smoothly as it can possibly go. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's just Command Tab into Avid's Symphony. Obviously, that is an Alt Tab for all my Windows friends out there. We're going to navigate right over here to our settings. And where we left off last time, we left off at keyboard, and we talked about how the keyboard and the command palette work hand in hand with each other. Well, let's go on to the next one. It's called Marquee Title, but that's a little bit deceiving. What actually happens when you're going to create a title is you come up to the clip, you navigate down to New Title, and what's going to happen is, is that Media Composer, or Symphony, is going to prompt you and say, well, okay, hold on a second. What type of title do you want to create? Do you want to create a Title Tool Title, or do you want to create a marquee title? Now, what most people do is they say, oh, okay, well, what I want to do is I want to create a, you know, a standard title tool. And you know what? I think that's probably all that, you know, that's all I'm ever going to use because, you know, marquee is a little bit too complicated for me. And they say title tool, they get the Avid title tool, and they start working. Well, what ends up happening is, is that, you know, somewhere down the road, a client comes and says, you know what? I heard that marquee can do some really cool 3D text and stuff like that. Can we use marquee? And you say, oh, you know what? Sure, no problem. You navigate back up to clip and you say new title. The only problem is, is that because you persisted and you said, I only want to use the title tool, now you can't seem to get that option back to work inside of marquee. Well, that is where that marquee title tool setting is going to come into play. So let's head on over to marquee title. All I'm going to do is simply double click on it. And you'll see the very first option that you have is when creating a new title, what do you want to use? Do you want to use marquee? Do you want to use the title tool? Or do you want to be prompted? Well, in this case, we want to be prompted. Now, the next option, do we want to promote title tool title to marquee? Meaning, anytime that we need to go and alter a title and we're going to step into it, is it automatically going to open it in marquee? Do we want to do that? Do we not want to do that? Or do we want to be prompted? Well, for me, I always like to be prompted, so that's why I'm going to leave it as Ask Me. You'll see last, but certainly not least, we can also back up the titles on promotion, meaning if I say promote that title to marquee, a copy of that standard title tool title is going to be saved into my bin in case I ever need to go back to it. Okay, so now that I have Ask Me and Ask Me selected, I'm simply going to say OK, and we're going to move on to another exceptionally important setting inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And that is the media creation tool. What I'm going to do is just double click on media creation tool because one thing that I see people do all the time is they're capturing and they're importing into the, you know, if it's if it's your Windows machine, it's the C drive. If it's your Mac, it's obviously the Macintosh hard drive. And you never want to do that. Why? Well, you don't want to have the computer pounding that hard drive, you know, trying to play back media. So first thing I always tell people to do is go in and filter out the system drive and the launch drive. Now what we can do is we can actually come and say, okay, well, when we're capturing, what video resolution do we want to capture? Now, obviously, based on, you know, your capture hardware, this option is going to change as to what resolutions you have available to you. And obviously, it's also going to depend on the resolution you happen to be working at, whether you're working in, you know, 1080i, 2398, 720p. You might have more options in here than I have right now. But the great thing with this is, is that what I can do is that if I have multiple hard drives, I can say, well, you know what? I want the video resolution to be whatever I want it to be. In this case, HDV 720p. And what I want to do is I want to have the drive to be Jesse. Now, you'll see in this case, my choice is Jesse, or I have the internal Macintosh hard drive on my computer, which I've already filtered out. But the great thing is, is that I can say apply to all and apply to all. And what's going to happen is, is that this option here is going to trickle through to every other tab that I have here. So if I'm creating titles, you'll see right now it's going to be created in HDV 720p MXF, and it's going to go to the Jesse drive. And because I applied that to all, it's going to apply that, like I said, to capture, to titles, to import, to mixing down and transcoding, to motion effects, to renders, 
and even to media type. Now media type obviously is MXF. You can't really get in and change that, but if I go back here, you'll see that under my render options, I do have a few more options in here. Like I want the video resolution to be HDV 720p MXF, same as source, save after the render is done. I can choose whether I want it to be 8-bit, 16-bit, or automatic. And when working in stereoscopic 3D, I can choose the source quality to be full, half best quality, half good quality, quarter, eighth, or sixteenth quality. But in most cases, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to come back to the capture settings. You're going to choose your resolution. You're going to choose your drive. You're simply going to apply to all. And then you're going to say OK. And you can really set it and forget it because now you know that all your media is going to be going to whatever drive you happen to set it to. And you don't need to worry about that media ending up on your Macintosh hard drive or on your main C drive. And then you end up having these rogue media files sort of appearing all over the place. And it really makes things difficult to archive when you get to that point. Okay, so the next setting that I want to get in and I want to talk about is the timeline setting right here. I'm simply going to double click on it. Now, right at the start, you have the display options. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually going to skip over the display options. You can get in and you can pretty much figure things out for yourself. There's things like show the position bar, show the effects contents, show the marked waveforms, show the toolbar. But where the timeline settings really come in is inside of the edit options. And you know, one question that I get asked all the time by editors is, you know, I always want to add filler in at the start of my timeline, but you know, Media Composer or Symphony always sort of picks some arbitrary number, you know, as far as how much filler to add at the start of my sequence. Well, believe it or not, it's not an arbitrary number. It's actually located right in here. You'll see that the start filler duration right now is set to 12 seconds. But how do we actually get in and add that filler? Well, you know what? No problem. What I'm going to do is simply cancel out of the timeline settings. And if I had a sequence in here, what I could simply do is right click. And right here, you'll see it says add filler at start. Or what I can do is simply navigate up to clip. And I can come right down here to add filler at start. So you'll see a couple ways to do the exact same thing. Now, next, you're going to see that Media Composer Symphony can find flash frames shorter than 10 frames. In most cases, I leave this pretty small. I leave this about two frames. Because in most cases, for me, if I'm going to have a flash frame, it's going to be one or two frames at the absolute most. Anything more than that, in most cases, is something that I've done intentionally. Now, for me, a big, huge workflow enhancement is auto-patching and auto-monitoring. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is just simply say OK, and I need some clips to work with here. So what I'm going to do is just create a new bin. I'll just call it Sequences. And let's just get a clip here. doesn't matter which clip. We'll just take the first clip. Sure. I'll just hit B to edit it into my timeline. And what I think we're going to do here is we'll just pick a different clip. I'm just going to double click here. Yeah, sure, why not? And what I'm going to do is just minimize this bin. I just need to get it out of the way for a second. And with my sequence here, what I'm going to do is just add a couple new video tracks by hitting Command and Y on the Mac Control and Y for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm just going to create two new tracks because I want to explain for a second how we're going to get in to moving uh, video and putting it on different tracks. Now, when I say moving video, I'm not talking about clips that are in your timeline already. What I'm talking about is clips that you're going to want to edit into your timeline. Because some editors I see like to edit on multiple video tracks. For me, I like to have all my edits on one track. But you know what? That's the great thing about working in Media Composer or really any other nonlinear editing application. You can edit however you want. Now, you'll see over here what I have is I have my video one layer, which represents this clip here. And then I have my sequence here that has my three video tracks and two audio tracks. Now, we've pretty much been doing standard editing when I've been dropping clips into the timeline by just dropping them onto video track one. But what if I wanted to take this clip, and what I'll do is just mark an out point right about there. And what if I wanted to edit it onto video track two right about here? Well, the easiest way to do it is to actually simply take video track one, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to drag it right over here, almost like I'm patching it into video track two. Now, obviously, anything that I have turned on is going to overwrite whatever happens to be on that track. But now you'll see video one is being edited onto video track two. So if I mark an in point here, and I simply hit B on the keyboard, I now have those two clips in my timeline. Now you'll see I clicked and dragged to go from one track to another, but there's got to be an easier way to do that. Well, of course there is, and this is where our timeline settings come into play. You'll see I have auto patching and auto monitoring turned on. I'm going to say OK, because instead of doing that click and drag, all I have to do is select the track that I want it to go to, and then simply turn the layer off that it's on, and it will automatically patch itself 
into that track. But what it's also doing at the same time as auto patching it for me is that it's auto monitoring, meaning this little monitor here tells me what video layer down is being monitored. So right now it's monitoring video layer two down. Now if I didn't have, and I'm just gonna go back to video layer one here, if I didn't have auto monitoring turned on, and I said okay, when I patched into video two, you'll see the monitor doesn't move to show me what's on video layer two and down. I have to do that myself. So that's why these two options go so well hand in hand. Now this section down here talks about segment tools and we're not gonna get to segment tools right now. We're gonna get to segment tools in a later tutorial. So we're gonna come back to the timeline settings then. But the last thing that I wanna show you in here is of course, what's gonna happen when you create a new sequence. How many video tracks do you wanna add? You can add all the way up to 24 video tracks. How many mono audio tracks do you wanna add? Again, up to 24. How many stereo audio tracks? Again, up to 24. This is where you can set that so you can really set things to work however you want to work. What I'm going to do is simply say OK. And the last thing that I want to talk about before I wrap this tutorial up is my workspace views. Now you see them over here inside of my settings, but where they're really located and where you're really going to do most of your workspace switching is right up here under Windows. And you'll see right now I have workspaces selected and we have six workspaces that we can choose from. Now right now I'm on source and record editing, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change things around a little bit. What I'm going to do is just bring this all the way up here. Why don't I just bring my timeline all the way across just for kicks. And uh, you know, maybe we'll just shrink down my editing window here. Why not? Just like that. Because maybe I like to have a few bins all over the place here. Let's just create another new bin. And we'll create another new bin. Sure, because this is kind of how I like to work, you know, hypothetically. But you know what? I really would like to have this as a switchable view so that I can switch back and forth between, you know, color correcting mode and audio mixing mode and Kevin's favorite editing mode that we see right here. Well, how we do that is with workspaces, and it's actually very easy to do. What I'm going to do is simply navigate up to Windows. I'm going to come down to Workspaces, and I'm going to come right down here, and I'm going to create a new workspace, and I'm simply going to call this Kev's Favorite Editing Workspace and say OK. Once I've done that, what's going to happen is inside of my settings, that workspace is going to appear right here. And where it's also going to appear is right up here under Windows, under Workspaces, and there's Kevin's favorite editing workspace. But you know what? Kevin's favorite editing workspace really isn't his favorite editing workspace. Why? Because really my source and record editing is my favorite editing workspace, just like that. But you'll see this is how you can get in and create different layouts for, you know, audio mixing, color correction, effects work, you know, editing. Maybe you want to have, you know, six different editing layouts because you like to do things in a specific way. Well, this is how you can do it and you can get in and change them literally at the click of a mouse to get back to whatever mode you happen to be in so you can get the most efficient work done possible. Okay, so that really wraps up our look at the basic settings that you're going to want to cover before you even get in and start editing. And in the next tutorial, we're going to do just that. We're going to get in and we're going to start editing and we're going to start showing you how to create some quick and easy timelines so you can get up to speed editing in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.